Hello Tipsters and Tricksters, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Vintage Tips and Tricks video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Bee, I am a vintage glamour enthusiast. I make vintage beauty and style videos with a little bit of sustainability, veganism and lifestyle thrown in for good measure. So if that sounds like your jam, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when my videos come out. Today I finally have another vintage haul for you guys. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've done one of these. Obviously I recently did a closet clear out but I haven't gone vintage shopping for a very long time. I have been shopping on eBay and slowly accumulating things but they come in dribs and drabs. It's not as exciting as going to a vintage store and like finding treasures all at once and coming home with like a big goodie bag. So I did that for the first time in Lewis the other day. I went and visited Lewis where they have amazing antique stores that have little pockets of vintage kind of tucked away in the corners and boy did I find some treasures. So there's a little bit of my eBay finds, there's a little bit of what I found in Lewis and there is a lot of stock. So I'm going to make the big announcement after the intro. Let's get started. What have you got? If you haven't got, haven't got love. So the exciting news is because I have quite the addiction for shopping for vintage, I can't stop myself and I do quite often buy things without trying them on. I have decided that to curb my hoarding of vintage because I have way too much of it but also because you guys often ask like where to source cheap vintage from and as part of my Patreon the five pound and up tiers get the curated vintage finds every Tuesday on my Instagram close friends story so I troll the internet and then share a bunch of links to super awesome cheap vintage bargains and I thought well some of these things I actually do buy myself and then when I get them they either don't suit me or they're too big or they're too small or I just realized I made an impulse purchase and I'm never going to wear it. So I've started to actually deliberately shop for stock. So if I find something that I just think is really cool, I'm going to buy it. And if I don't want to keep it, I'm going to sell it in my shop. So if you haven't already followed my shop, it is vintage tips and tricks underscore shop on Instagram. I ask people to DM me over there. If you don't have Instagram and you see something in today's uh, haul that you like the look of that I I mentioned that I'm going to sell feel free to drop me an email uh, for this week you'll need to so frustrating my email provider I changed it and the old email provider totally stuffed up so now my email for work doesn't work for a week so over the next few days message me at btownsend at gmail.com but normally you should email me at hello at btownsend.com so just to make it confusing you could just cc both to me it's probably easier yeah if you're really interested in something that you see here and you don't have instagram email me because i found like trying to communicate in the comments on youtube you guys never see my replies and some people have like made dibs on items and then i've put them aside for them and never get back to me so i think it's easier dm me not on my normal instagram but on the shop instagram otherwise you'll just get lost on it see your message or email me if you don't have IG. I would prefer the DMs on Instagram because it's all in one place. But anyway, rambling aside, let's get into showing you some of these goodies. Okay, to start with, I'm gonna show you some uh, eBay goodies that I got a while ago. So I actually scored this little 1950s wiggle skirt. It's so cute. It's got like this, I guess, tropical style print. Come up nice and close. It's like a bubble gum or like Barbie pink with these white yeah, tropical print on it. And then at the back where it's got the split, it's got these cute little covered buttons. I just love this. I will be keeping this. This is totally my jam. I'm really getting into that like 50s but super bright colorful thing at the moment. So for now, I'm keeping it. I do have a habit of like wearing things for a while and then wanting to change my wardrobe. So that's not to say that at some point in the future this won't go up for sale. But for the moment, I'm going to be keeping it. Because I was hunting for 50s skirts, I found this one as well. Excuse me, I'll have a think about like doing the buckles up. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this. It doesn't matter, B, let it go. Um, so this really cute little one, which is like a slightly aqua, it's kind of a sky blue, but with a slight aqua tinge to it, with these lilac flowers and the little almost chartreuse leaves on it. I'll come up close and show you the pattern. Everything is, here I'll turn it sideways, everything is... Um, maxing out with my lights. I've got too many highlights. Hopefully I can adjust that in the editing. But yeah, it's a little just below the knee wiggle skirt. Well, actually it's a um, 
a pencil skirt, not a wiggle skirt, and just got a plain split up the back and a zip on the side. So it is a 50s one. Just thought that was really, really cute. I did pair it with this blouse that I actually got from Rachel Marquez. I'm wearing lip gloss and I have something stuck in my lip gloss. This has to go. Yeah, so I'm just really enjoying these like crazy pattern, super bright, spring summer looks at the moment so this is another one that i'm going to hang on to once again it doesn't mean it won't go up for sale in the future just at the moment i'm enjoying wearing it but i do tend to change up my wardrobe a fair bit and i'm starting to have a new rule of if something comes in something has to go out so the other thing is like i'll be listing some of this stuff today up for sale but because i am keeping some things some of my old vintage and my old repro will be going onto my shop because that's my rule whatever comes in must be balanced out with something going out. So yeah, there'll be plenty of stock going up. <laughs> I didn't film this today because it goes really, really well with something that's in the wash. So this was from an Instagram. No, I think it was a reel. I'll put the reel in here um, that I put together for this. I was going to keep this, but then I realized like, I just don't, I just don't need this. I don't see myself really wearing it, even though it is so incredibly cute, but this little knitted or crocheted really 1940s bed cape or bed jacket. It's got these little like pom-pom buttons on it and it's just like the cutest stitch. How gorgeous is that? Like it is really, really adorable. It's got a couple of teeny weeny weeny holes in it. I am a beginner crocheter, so I won't be trying to repair that. If you know crochet or you know someone who knows crochet, I think that's something that could be very, very easily fixed because the holes are very, very small, but I don't want to touch it and stuff it up. So I won't be repairing it before I sell it, but otherwise it is in perfect condition and it looks really cute, as you can see from the little video that I did. So this will be going onto my shop and up for sale. <sighs> Now this next piece is covered in hair. Ew, it will be washed before, like if I put it up for sale, if. This is the thing. Okay, so I spotted this on eBay. It is a late 30s, early 40s varsity band jumper uh, in like this really vibrant purple with like the sort of toweling style band logo on the front. You can see like it's really raised. It says FHS band on it and it's got a little V neck. Because of the length of the ribbing here and the length of the ribbing on the sleeve, I have ascertained based on researching other ones on the internet that it is either late 30s or early 40s. The 50s style ones had a shorter rib here, even though the style of a varsity jumper has stayed the same for, it stayed the same from like the 1930s right through to the 1960s or very, very similar. So it is quite hard to tell the decade, but you can tell by the length of the ribbing and for example like whether this has a, a round neck or a v-neck etc so i'm pretty confident this is late 30s early 40s it is damaged it does have moth holes and someone has repaired the front here but most of the ones i found online are in similar condition because these were worn by college and high school students so you know and they were for sport and band and stuff so they did get wear and tear to them so that's pretty common but they are quite a collector's item so i really like this like i re i bought it for the purpose of selling it but then when i got it home and i tried it on i really really liked it so i'm really torn as to whether i want to sell this maybe if someone out there like if one of you really wants this and you know how much they're worth because obviously like i want to sell it for if i'm going to get rid of it i want to sell it for what it's worth so if you're really interested in it and you want to make me an offer, I will consider offers, but I don't know that I'll actually list it on the shop. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's probably one of those pieces that I'll realize I really don't need, but at the same time, it is kind of a little bit of a holy grail piece and I got it for such a good price. Things to think about. <laughs> now, the first day that the antique stores opened in Lewis, I popped out for a big walk through the nature reserve in that area and then walked down into Lewis and saw that the antique store was open and I couldn't help it. It was like really quiet. I think there was only one person in there. So I decided to go in. And one of the first things I spotted just hanging randomly on a nail, on a hanger on a nail, in the hallway as I was walking through all the antiques was this amazing late 50s, early 60s dress. Uh, it's got like a V cut to it at the front so that the panels kind of come over your boobs. Uh, beautiful big circle skirt and at the back has a button up back on it you guys can see and I just love the pattern. It's got almost like a tiki pattern but not a tiki pattern which is good because 
yeah, there's like a gray area for cultural appropriation there. Uh, I mean, definitely some tiki patterns and some Hawaii, Hawaiian patterns are 100% cultural appropriation. Um, and I think some of them could be considered cultural appreciation, but I just kind of like to steer clear of that kind of stuff. I don't want to upset anyone or make anyone feel uncomfortable. So I like this because it's kind of got the vibes without actually crossing over into that area and I really like that it's brown and black and white it's not like a color combo that I have in my wardrobe and it I thought it looked really good on me so I will indeed be keeping this because it fits so well I had no idea if it would fit me I didn't try it on and it literally fits me like a glove so yeah this is one of become one of my favorite pieces so I will definitely be keeping this uh, I'm unlikely to ever sell it, but once again, we don't know. My taste changes. You know, like, like if you look back at what I wore four or five years ago, it's nothing like what I wear now. So maybe one day I'll be over it and I'll sell it. So we shall see. Okay, so guys, this next piece is like a holy grail piece for me. I have been looking for a pair of these for like seven, eight, nine years now. And I spotted them. I'm going to hold on to the suspense. I spotted them in the first store that I went into the other day when I deliberately went out looking for stock and I wandered on in. I was looking through this antique store where honestly the stuff was priced at what it's worth. It wasn't bargains. It was antiques that were quite pricey, but that's their value, you know? And in the cabinet, I spotted these. Some of you may know what these are. They are 1930s celluloid glasses. They are the real deal. I checked very carefully looking at them. You can see like the little, I don't know if it's gonna show up on the camera, but you can see the little hinge is just like a little bent kind of wire. Um, they're definitely celluloid and you can tell by like the structure of the arms and stuff and the fact that the glasses are really flat. So cute. I've been searching for these. I found many, but the reason I don't own them or didn't own them is because all of them were between 100 and 200 pounds. Yeah. Guess how much these were? 10 pounds, 10 pounds, 10 pounds, guys. I couldn't believe it. I think they thought they were like kids toy glasses because when I said, oh, how much are the thirties or forties um, glasses in the cabinet there. And the guy was like, oh, I don't know. It's open. Just open it. Have a look. I saw 10 pounds and I was like, 10 pounds, I'll take it. And his face kind of dropped. And I think they were either mismarked or he didn't realize that they were 1930s sunglasses until I said it. But obviously they had the price tag on them. He didn't say anything. He gave them to me for 10. So no, I will not be selling them. This like for me, this is one of the like top three things that I've looked for my whole vintage loving life. So yeah. I'm gonna put them on, show you what they look like. They are just the coolest things ever. I love these because they're, I have quite a narrow face and other people tell me that glasses look good on me, but I never quite like the shape of most modern glasses. I just find them too wide for my face. I feel like it looks a bit weird and I'm always trying to balance it out with my hair. Whereas these glasses are small enough that they sit really nicely on my face in my opinion. So I am, in love. And in case you're wondering, from the 1930s, I forget exactly what year it was, 37 maybe? I feel like I might be way off on that. I'll put the date up on the screen, but polarization of glasses did come in quite early. And the idea was to protect your eyes from the UV rays. They didn't really do much about glare and the polarization didn't always work. So it is hit and miss, but vintage glasses do offer you some protection. Obviously they're not as good as modern glasses because the technology has come a long way, but thought you guys might like to know that. The second thing I spotted walking into the antique stores of Lewis was a shoebox at the bottom of a shelf, like tucked in a corner behind a bunch of books. I just saw this little glimmer of silver and I was like, that looks like a pair of silver 1940s sandals. And it was, check these babies out. They are too big for me. There is 7.5. They actually came the bottom of the box, like the top of the box is missing, but the bottom of the box is the original box. And I've looked up other boxes from that era and the writing and stuff matches. So they are the real deal. Well, you can tell they're the real deal because of just the condition of the leather and stuff. They are in extremely good condition for their age. They have obviously never been worn or maybe they've been worn like to try on, but the bottom of them is smooth with very minimal scuffing. And inside they have a material 
insole really really cute and they only have like a couple of places like here where someone has like they've been done up the silver paint is coming off a little bit but it would be very easily fixed if you know how to paint it's not even leather it's actually the top part is um the soles are leather the top part is material with a coating on it so yeah you could use some sort of material or leather paint on that there's a little bit of flaking like where the join is and i did spot somewhere else oh and on the side here but for the most part for their age these are pretty much in really excellent condition i will be selling these as they aren't my size and uh, i would recommend whoever buys them does put some leather rub on them to soften them up they are a little bit stiff but if you treat the material and the paint on the outside to soften it up they are definitely 100 wearable uh, so yeah these will be going up for sale on my shop if you're after a pair of true vintage 1940s sandals then the 60s lover in me got very excited because I stumbled across a whole section that just had like two railfuls of 60s clothing. I will be going back. I maxed out my budget. I had a budget. I do my budget based on like how much I make for the month and then I give a certain percentage back to buying. So I will go back next month when I have another budget to work with. But uh, yeah, I was pretty excited about the 60s clothing situation there. So the first thing I picked up off the rail is this shift dress. It is a uh, like knee length mini you'll see in the picture. It is too big for me, so I will definitely be selling this despite loving the pattern and really hoping that it would fit well. In all honesty, I was hoping that none of it would fit me because I'm supposed to be selling it, but if something fits me, the likelihood of me selling it is pretty minimal. Like I'm freaking hopeless, but it doesn't fit me, so I will sell it. It's just really cute with this kind of psychedelic floral print, like I guess more like a flower power floral print in yellow and pink and orange and like baby blue color. It's got this little tie up neckline and just really, really cute. It would probably best fit, I'm gonna say a 10 to 12 UK. It is a vintage four, uh, a vintage 16, but I would say probably a UK 12 would best fit in this. Maybe a 14 at a stretch, but it's probably something you want to wear that's a little bit baggy. So yeah, I'd probably say UK 12. I got so excited when I saw this. I will say up front, I am going to sell this. When I put it on, I loved it, but it is slightly too big for me in the jacket. I mean, I could get away with it, but I think I just need to sell it. Like I just need to not hold on to stuff. It's not really my style. It's like a super cool style, but it's not really my style, even though part of me wants this to be my style, but realistically I won't wear it. So if you want it, it, it can be yours. And that is a 1960s, it's late 60s, early 70s pleated skirt and jacket suit set in this aqua blue color. It is so, so pretty. It's like a true turquoise sort of seafoam green color. Uh, seafoam green, not turquoise. Um, yeah, again, my lighting is going crazy, but yeah, pleats on the front. No pleats on the back. It's like a faux, it's a synthetic, but it, I think it's acetate, but it's like a faux linen style. And then it's got almost like a safari style jacket to go with it with the like pockets here and it has a belt uh, you'll see in the cutaway. But yeah, it is just amazing. <laughs> so yeah, this will be going up on my shop. Again, if you don't have an IG, you can always send me an email just send me like cc me for both emails and let me know if you're interested it says taurus by talia fashion and it is a size 14 i would say an 8 to 10 i'm a 6 to 8 uk so an 8 to 10 no more than a 10 uk would fit into this um maybe with maybe a 12 no i think shoulders wise it might be a struggle that's the thing about a lot of vintage stuff is the shoulders tend to be smaller so i would say yeah a uk 10 for this one but so cool okay we're on to the lucky last item and once again I haven't buttoned it up I'm gonna drive myself mental <laughs> I spotted this little baby now I have been on the hunt for mini skirts I'm yeah very much back into my 60s phase again so for now I will be holding on to this because I think it's so cute and it does fit me again that that's not to say that I won't get rid of it in the future because with my 60s stuff I ebb and flow whereas I pretty consistently come back to the 50s kind of look but 60s and 70s like 
I wane in and out of. But for the moment, for this season, I will definitely be wearing this super cute 70s like bubblegum pink. It's got like a pale peachy orange and then white checker pattern, like diamond checker pattern with these mother of pearl buttons all the way down the front. So cute. And it's very like classic shape, like that um, A-line mini shape. It's all lined and who's it by? It's by Elegant. Pierre Elegant, made in England. It's a size 12 vintage, but it, like I'm an eight on the bottom and there's no way you would get like any bigger size into that. It's quite small. And it's Cortel apparently. There you go, Neo Spun Jersey. But yeah, so cute. I'm loving this. I can't wait to wear this. I have actually got the perfect pair of platform wedge like strap sandals to go with this, but they're in storage. I really, I thought they were in the cupboard and I went to style this outfit with the white blouse and the little pink scarf and then these platforms and they weren't there. <laughs> I can totally see this with white, slightly sheer tights or maybe even like um, nude fishnets and then these platform gold and white wedges, wedge sandals that I have. It's gonna look so cool. Okay guys, so that is the vintage haul. As you can see, like a good amount of the stuff that I picked up will be going up for sale. So do go and check out the shop. As always, I will list all the details over there, but if you get over there and I haven't listed something yet because it is on Instagram, I tend to list like three times a week. I leave stuff that's been sold up for a while. So if you don't see it there listed as sold, I may not have put it up yet. So just feel free to go ahead and DM me and ask for information. I do tend to like to wash and mend some things before I list it. So sometimes it doesn't go up for a little while. So yeah, feel free to go right ahead and DM me if you wanna nab something before someone else does. But yeah, keep an eye out because there are other things uh, from my collection that are continuing to go up for sale. This was just the stuff that I purchased recently, but there are other things from my collection whenever I visit my storage container where I have all my old vintage. I'm forever choosing things to, yeah, get rid of because I have way too many clothes. So do keep an eye out. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the video and any suggestions for future videos. Come and check out my Patreon. If you're interested in tips on how to shop vintage, I share extra videos every month. I also have the curated vintage finds. So instead of buying the stuff off of me after I've bought it, I actually share the pieces and the links to buy them yourselves. So you're not paying for my time and my expertise. You're just buying the items yourself. So that's a little bonus. You can also get like personalized style advice and access to message me whenever you want. Plus music tier and other cool perks as well. There's tons to go and see over on Patreon. So do check it out. It's all linked down below. Otherwise I will see you in the next video. Bye.